talk about comfort in this scripture, the Bible already introduced to us that there is someone called a comforter. The person that thinks is a thinker. The person that eats is a food disease. The person that lies is a what? Ah. So the person that comforts is who? So when we talk about comfort, we are talking when we talk about comfort, the God has already designed a system that there is one that is responsible to bring a dimension of comfort to every child of God. And the scripture made it clear here. He said, the comforter who is the Holy Spirit. The Bible begins to teach us here that the comforter we are talking about who is responsible to bring us the comfort we long desire he is the Holy Spirit. In Malachi chapter 4 from verse 1, the Bible recorded he said, in the last days that the heart will burn like an oven. We are such in a day that the heart is born, that the heart is burning like an oven. Economic crisis everywhere, cost of living becoming high, everything becoming so terrible, the heart is becoming like an oven. Rumors of war everywhere. But can I tell you this? Those that have the Holy Spirit will enjoy a reasonable level of comfort away from the noise of the world. And this is why every child of God has to have a right standing with God. Every child of God has to have a right standing with God. And this, one, of the, one of the things that the Lord is teaching us this month is that we can be so exempted from the calamity that is happening around the world. Why? Through the ministry of the Holy Spirit that brings about comfort. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. What does it mean to comfort? Is to bring into a state of ease. Is to bring in a state of rest. All to them that shall fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in their wings and they shall go forth as a calf of the state. God is dealing with us that anyone who dare open up to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, among other things, you will enjoy the comforting ministry of the Holy Spirit. So this morning I will share with you the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of who? Please pay attention and then please let me fast with the scriptures. Experiencing comfort is rooted in God. Through the Spirit of God. And I told you on Wednesday, I said, it takes the knowledge of the Holy Spirit to have this experience. You want to enjoy the comfort he said, but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach. One of the ways that the Holy Spirit comforts is to teach. Because ignorance brings confusion. Ignorance is darkness. One of the ways that the Holy Spirit comforts is to teach. Ignorance frustrates. Somebody say, I need money. Oh God, I will enjoy your comfort. And the Lord is saying, start, start food business. And you begin to sell food. And you begin to see money. That's the comforting ministry of the Spirit. And the Lord will give you something like an hedge above others that you will know. God has finally comforted your finances. One of the ways that the Holy Spirit comforts us is to teach. Is to teach. And after He teaches you in the days where you need it, the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance. Nobody enjoy the comfort of the Holy Spirit in ignorance. And this is why every child of God should be close to the Bible. Experiencing comfort is rooted in God. And it is done through the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God one of the ways he does that is that he teaches us. Tap your neighbor. He teaches us. Tap somebody again say he teaches us. Let me say this. We are talking about the person of the Holy Spirit this morning. One of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to grace earthly people and places with the glorious presence of God's holiness. Let me say this. One of the functions of the Spirit of God is to grace earthly people and places with his glorious with the, with the glorious presence of God's holiness wherever the spirit of God is there is holiness 
And that is why he's called the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of God is in the town hall, that town hall becomes the habitation of God. The Holy Spirit can turn a stadium where they play football into an atmosphere where all sinners will be saved. And that's why we can be using an hotel hall for church service and the presence of God will be so mighty there as long as the presence of God is there as long as the presence of the spirit of God is there that place is declared holy that's why this minister sang that song just breathe your name upon me breathe when the name of God is breathed upon you his presence the holiness of God becomes your heritage one of the function of the Holy Spirit we could see that in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 5 one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to grace earthly people and places with the glorious presence of God's holiness. When the Holy Spirit comes in the place, He brings God's holiness to the atmosphere. Yes, look at this. And He said, Draw not near hither, pull off your shoes from off thy feet. For the place where we for the place where on thou standest is a holy ground. This was talking about Moses. If you study from verse 1 of this scripture, Exodus chapter one, uh, 3, from verse 1 to 8. If you study this scripture, talking about when Moses had an encounter with God in the burning bush. And in that burning bush, when when Moses was drawing close to where the burning bush was, the Lord told him, Remove your shoes. For the place where you are is a holy ground. What is what makes that ground holy? The presence of God. Anywhere you see the Holy Spirit, He brings about God's holiness, and that's why it's called the Holy Spirit. Think about this. Why do many of us come to the altar to pray? Why we came here? All this place with grass. Yeah, we killed snake here before. Yeah, we killed snake here before. The why do people need that here to greet? Why the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, has made this place consecrated. And I become a holy habitation for God. Can I say amen to them? The Holy Spirit is called holy. Why? Because He is holy in Himself. That implies you can't find evil. Anywhere the Holy Spirit is found, you won't find evil. He is holy in Himself. Quite apart from all evil, you can't find any trace of evil in Him. He brings a sense of reverence and glory into the very atmosphere where he is anywhere the spirit of god he is it brings about the glory and the reference of god ha ah. okay just let me teach let me show you about six scriptures that validate where the holy spirit was called that from scripture literally you know most times what our generation does is to ask where's the holy spirit in the bible let me show you they say, well, show me the scripture. I've met people before that they'll say, show me the scripture that says Jesus is the son of God. Show me the scripture that says you should be going to church. So I've made up my mind that any subject I want to teach on, I will show you where it's written in the Bible. So that the day they ask you where's the Holy Spirit written in the Bible, you can show them. I'll show you six. Number one. Psalm 51 and verse 11. Please, you have to be fast with scriptures today. Psalm 51 and verse 11. I want all of us to go back home today with a holy hunger to fellowship with the Spirit of God. He is a person. He is a person. You lied to somebody yesterday. You know? You know I don't do you don't know I don't do where I do I like to do online prophecy because of the people I've not met. I don't like doing prophecy in church again because many times it because it brings chaos. Except I see evil and I just pray from afar and I let it end. Psalm 51 and verse 11. Are we there? He said, Cast not thy cast not away. Cast me not away from your what? From your he said, Take not the what? Did you see that in scriptures? The psalmist was praying, do not take the Holy Spirit from me. This scripture validates that there's something called the Holy Spirit in Scripture. And it implies that the Holy Spirit can be taken away from you. 
they can be carrying the spirit of your village. The spirit that is not holy, that is crooked. The spirit that is making you to be lazy to God's work. The spirit that is not making you to get excited at instructions that will change your story. Check people that are being prayed for repeatedly, repeatedly, and yet the issue will still remain the same. Check their level of obedience. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18, let's take another scripture. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18, Mary became pregnant with child of the Spirit. It's possible to have a child of the Spirit. It's only Mary that we have seen that enjoy that. Parents, take care of your children. Your children are your future. The children you don't correct today will disgrace you openly tomorrow. If your parents say amen, so it means the parent, the children I refuse to correct today will disgrace me openly tomorrow. Some of us that are mothers that are pamper our children, I see trouble coming. I see trouble. I see trouble. There are some of your guests that will become multiple, it is where well. I see trouble coming. And it's because you refuse to correct. I'm seeing trouble. Mary became pregnant. Look at this. He said, now, the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When, as his mother, Mary, was espoused to, to, to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of what? Uh, I don't want to explain this one because of time. Number three, Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. Luke chapter 11 and verse 13 calls out the Holy Spirit. He said, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. He said, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So you can ask for the Spirit. Let your Spirit breathe upon me, O oh God. Let the Spirit breathe upon me. I stand in alignment of your Spirit, O oh God. All right. We can say that. He said, now, Mark 11 and verse 13. All right, let's move to number 4. Ma Matthew chapter 11 and verse... Sorry, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. The this talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But he calls out the Holy Spirit literally. Can we see that? Matthew, 11, Matthew 3 and verse 11. Matthew 3. Ma he said, indeed, I baptize you with the... I baptize you to water Lord to repent us, but he that cometh after me is my child and high. Whose shoes... I'm not worthy to be here. He shall baptize you with what? With the Holy what? Spirit and with what? So this scripture calls out the Holy Spirit. If anybody tells you where is the Holy Spirit is written in the Bible, where God said there is something called Holy Spirit, these are scriptures to quote. He's a person. Act of the Apostles chapter 15 and verse 28. Act 15, 28. Act 15, 28. Act 15, 28. Can we be very fast? Act 15, 28. He said, it seems good to me. It seems good to who? Did you see this? It seems good to who? And to Ross. To lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. It seems good to the Holy Spirit. There are things the Holy Spirit permits. We will get there. Number 6. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. Romans 1 verse 4. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. And, declare, and we declare and declare to be the son of God with power according to who? The Bible begins to show us here that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of who? Ha, let's not go there. Let me... Let me move further from here. All right. Glory to God. Do we get those scriptures now? Let me show you five things and then we'll close in this service. One, five, yes. This, there are names that relate the Holy Spirit with the Father. When the Father is trying to bring about a demonstration 
of who the spirit, who his spirit is. There are names. And this is why I want to tell us these names. I'm going to give you about five names that relate the Holy Spirit to the Father. And I'm going to tell you what this name implies. When they call the Holy Spirit the Spirit of the Lord, it means something. There is a function that is coming. When they tell the Spirit of God, there is a function. When God said, my spirit, still talking about the Holy Spirit, so that we are not going to get confused about this. Please pay attention. Number one, is the Spirit of God. Is the Spirit of what? The name of the Spirit, the name of the Holy Spirit as relates with the Father. Meaning, when the Father is saying, when you hear the Spirit of God, he's still talking about the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And anywhere you see the scripture, look at Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 3. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3. Anywhere you see the Spirit of God in scripture, three things always manifest. It talks about power, it talks about prophecy, and it talks about guidance. Anywhere you see, and the Spirit of God, the power of God is about to be manifested. A, rather, the prophecy is about to come, or a guidance is about to come. I'm going to show you. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, and God said, no, let's start from verse 1. The heart was in that form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Let's start from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the heart. Go to verse 2. And the heart of his heart form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved over the face of the water. Look at verse 3. And he said, let there be what? We we'll see the power of creation. We we'll see the power of creation associated with the spirit of God. Anywhere you see the spirit of God, there is a manifestation of his power that is about to bring forth. When you hear the spirit, you, know, you can see in context the Holy Spirit. We are going to get there. But anywhere you see the name of the Holy Spirit bring, that is actually related with the Father, talking about the spirit of God, the power of God is about to be manifested, a prophecy is about to be born, or a guidance is about to be delivered. We see this in Genesis chapter 1. That when the Spirit of God moved out the face of the deep, the Bible said, let there be light. And the Bible, and the Bible recorded, he said, there was what? There was light. There was light. Can I pray for someone here? There will be light in your life. Yeah. You are not saying amen to them. Yeah. If I say amen, let your amen be loud and clear. Yeah. Look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 28. Matthew 12. And verse 28. Matthew 12 and verse 28. Matthew 12 and verse 28. Look at this. He said, if I cast out devils by the spirit of who? Now, you see that he's not talking about the Holy Spirit right here. He's talking about who? The spirit of God here. He's still, sorry, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, but he's talking about the Holy Spirit as he relates to the Father. Anywhere you see and the spirit of God, the power of God is about to be manifested. A prophecy is about to be born or a guidance is about to be delivered. Pay attention to this. They came to Jesus and they said, you are casting out demons by the spirit of demons. He said, no. Look at what he said. He said, I cast out the devils by the spirit of God. The kingdom of God has come unto you. This implies that Anywhere you hear the spirit of God, there is tendencies for the power of God to be manifested. When the preacher comes right now, please pay attention to this. Or you have an encounter in the dream. You see, if you understand these things, it will be easier for you to interpret dreams. You hear the spirit of God. It automatically validates. God is speaking in power. God is giving a prophecy or a guidance is about to be delivered. This will help your work with God. This will bring about the comfort you've been longing for. We we'll see the Spirit of God casting out devils, manifesting power right here. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 10. I told you anywhere you hear the Spirit of God, three things is inevitable. You can see the power, you can see prophecy, or you receive what? Guidance. 1 Samuel 10 and verse 10. 1 Samuel 10 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 10. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul and caused him to prophesy. And the Spirit, look at this. And when he has come into the, to the hill, behold, the company of the prophets met him. Look at what happened here. 
And the spirit of what come on, on Paul? Yeah, on Saul. He said, and the spirit of God came upon him. And he began to what? I told you when the spirit of God come upon someone, the power is about to be manifested or prophecy is about to be born. Imagine me singing a song that is gotten from God and the spirit of God come in that meeting. That's when people begin to utter, I see. When you see a preacher saying, I see you this week, this is what God is going to do. It's actually the spirit of God manifesting. I came in here one day. I said, the Lord is asking me to tell you, there's a woman here, you have a leg pain. It's been terrible, you are healed right now. What do you think is doing that? That's the spirit of God. That's the spirit of God as it relates to the Father. The spirit of God is the spirit of power. It's a spirit of prophecy and it's a spirit of guidance. In 2 Chronicles chapter 24 and verse 20, Zechariah was enabled by the spirit of God to proclaim the word of the Lord. Ezekiel 11 and verse 24, Ezekiel's vision of restoration of Israel was given by the spirit of God. Let's check that Ezekiel 11 24. Okay, Yes, Ezekiel 11, 24. Ezekiel had a vision of restoration of Israel that was given by the Spirit of the Lord. It's a spirit of power. It's a spirit of prophecy. And it's a spirit of what? Guidance. It's a spirit of guidance. <laughs> yeah. Ezekiel 11, 24. He said, after what? The Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by what? By the Spirit of God into what? He studied to, to them of the captivity. And so the vision that I had seen went up from me. Pay attention to this. People who see vision is actually the manifestation of the Spirit of who? Oh, I want to see vision. Somebody say, I just want to see what God is saying. And you can see vision where you have the atmosphere of the Spirit of God. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. Many of us actually sing some song that we don't know the realm they came from. You reach in mercy, you reach in power, you are mighty to say. That's the spirit of God here. You reach in mercy, you reach in power. Don't forget, it's the spirit of power. You are mighty to save. You are mighty to save. All right. Let's move further. That's one of the names. We we'll call him the Spirit of God. So, anywhere you hear the Spirit of God, power is about to be manifested. Prophecy is about to be delivered. Or guidance is about to be. Let me read one scripture that validates guidance. Romans chapter 4 and verse 14. Let me read one scripture that validates guidance. I've talked about the Spirit of power. I've talked about the, the, the Spirit that brought about vision. Now, let's talk about the one that brings what? Guidance. Guidance. Romans 8 verse 14. Romans chapter 8. So you reach in mercy. You reach in power. You are mighty to say. You reach in mercy. You reach in power. You are mighty to say. Look at this. As many as I led by who? By the Spirit of God. They are the who? So there is a leading that comes. Anytime you are enjoying the leading of God, you are enjoying fellowship with the Spirit of the Father, which is who? The Spirit of God. Glory to God. All right. When you hear the Spirit of God, we hear guidance. You see what? Prophecy. You see what? Power. All right. Number two. The Holy Spirit can also be called the Spirit of the Lord. We talk about the Spirit of God. Now, the Holy Spirit can also be called what? The Spirit of who? the Lord. That's a spirit of reference that brings about lordship and worship. And the spirit of the Lord. When you hear the, and the spirit of God come upon me, it talks about power, it talks about what? Guidance, it talks about what? Prophecy. But when you hear in scripture and the spirit of the Lord come upon me, there's a manifestation of the spirit when you see the Lord behind behind the spirit he's talking about reference he's talking about lordship and worship look at this and this gives a formula 
most, most often are known. He brings about liberty, freedom, and deliverance. Let me show you this. In Judges chapter 6 and verse 34, many of us know that story of uh, Gideon after they were oppressed many years by the, by the Midianites. And the Lord spoke to Gideon. And then 32,000 men came out. When 32,000 men came out, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to Gideon and said, reduce them to 300. Ah! I pray that this will be, I pray that this will become, yes, I want to pray here that this will become my experience. It's not going to be numbers that would make the job done, but holy whom the Spirit of God has rest upon. If the Spirit of God is the Spirit of the Lord rest upon people, they make accomplishment faster. It's not always the number. Waiting for a number to do anything, it means the Spirit of the Lord is absent. Yeah. Yeah. One person can sing in the choir and it will be good. We invited somebody sometimes ago, Gift Wonder. When the instrumentalists were misbehaving, he sang with that instrument and he sang with that backup. And it was still good. How many of you remember? Yeah. When the Spirit of the Lord is deadly upon you, it doesn't matter if it's consistent nuisance, it will still be done. That's what that's one thing the Lord that's one thing the Lord taught us in the story of Gideon. Judges chapter 6 and verse 34. Judges 6 and verse please let's be very fast with scripture. Judges chapter 6 and verse 34. 634. After the years of oppression of the Midianites, Gideon answered the cause on behalf of the Israelites. And the Bible declares that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Look at this. See it. He didn't talk about the Spirit of God, he talked about the Spirit of the Lord. Look at this. He said, and the, don't forget that we have seen the spirit of the God. Now we have seen the spirit of the Lord. It is see the Holy Spirit. But that name actually brings about a different manifestation. When you hear the spirit of God, it talks about power. It talks about guidance. It talks about prophecy. But when you see the spirit of the Lord, now let's pay attention. Look at this. And the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew trumpets. Abisa was gathered after him. Read the complete story. Read this complete story. There were 32,000 men standing who wanted to go and fight. And the Lord told Gideon, he said, reduce them to 300. And those 300, he said, those that has lamp and a trumpet, they should go for the fight. And when they got to the battlefield, they only blew the trumpet. As they blew the trumpet, all their enemies ran away. God was actually teaching the people that it's not number that get things done. It's the people that has the spirit. That has that spirit of the Lord. The spirit of reference. The spirit to worship. And the spirit of lordship. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. Let me say this. A study has shown that only three people in every organization get things done. Yeah. About 20% of them help to implement. Bulk of the 70 are mere watchers. It's study, it's study. It's not a biblical study. In every genuine, how many people control the world? The entire world. Who, who are actually holding claim on control? How many are they? Isaiah 59 and verse 19. Look at this. He says, so shall the fear of the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood. What will happen? The spirit of the Lord shall what? Lift up a standard against. Anywhere you see the spirit of the Lord, number one, you see liberty. You see freedom. You see deliverance. Three things. Anywhere you see this manifestation of the spirit of God, you see deliverance. You see liberty. You see freedom. And the spirit of the Lord came upon me, meaning the spirit of lordship, the spirit of worship, that spirit of freedom, that spirit of liberty, and the spirit of deliverance. When the enemy shall come in against you like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. He said, And the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to go forth. That was what he did in the days of Gideon. When that, when, when that spirit of lordship came upon him, he was anointed to communicate the deliverance that Israel needed. Look at this. He said, and the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captive. And 
the covering of sight to the blind. Look, the meaning of that is this. Liberty, freedom, deliverance. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Are we following? We are reading plenty of scriptures because I want to validate these things. So that nobody gets you confused about this thing. Nobody should ever get you confused. And this is why you need to go deeper. You want liberty? It manifests at the spirit of the Lord. You want to go in power? The spirit of, don't worry, I will tell you how we get to this realm. Uh, it's just the fellowship of the spirit. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 3, number 17. Look at this. And now, the Lord is that spirit. Where the, of the Lord is, there is what? So where you hear the spirit of the Lord, one thing should come to your mind. Liberty. When somebody said, the spirit of God, three things should come to your mind. Power, eh? prophecy, and what? But when somebody said, and the spirit of the Lord told me, what should come to your mind is liberty, eh? freedom, and what? But when somebody comes to you and says, and the spirit of the Lord, says you bring the money, that one wants to dupe you. Do you understand? I'm, saying, I'm telling you biblical truth now. Anywhere you hear the spirit of the Lord, it talks about liberty, it talks about what? And it talks about what? Deliverance. That's why he said, the Lord is that spirit. Whatever. The, the, many of us want to say, hey, is it not the Holy Spirit that is doing? Or yes, he does that by name. That's why Daniel is here from David. And the mandate on David is different from the mandate on Daniel. That's why the mandate on Gideon is different from the one that is on... Do you understand what I'm saying? Even most of us that give name is a reflection of some few things. Like the testimony we read today, he said, God is the holder of my life. Holder of my... That lady is an Igbo... It's because I could not pronounce the Igbo version of it. That's why I said she should write the English version. The lady was in the pool of blood. And the Spirit of the Lord stepping into that atmosphere. And the pool of blood was stopped. So she looked for a name and said, God is the holder. So when they look at that child, and they look at that child and they say, God is the holder of my life. Anytime you will be remembering that testimony, how God delivered her from the pool of blood. Do you understand? So when we hear the Spirit of God, it's actually an encoded relationship to bring about power. When you hear the Spirit of the Lord, it's actually an encoded relationship to bring about what? Liberty. Are we following now? God bless you. All right, number three my spirit we have seen in scripture where god called the holy spirit my what my what my spirit and it comes with his own joy chapter 2 verse 28 and it, when you hear my spirit it talks about warning warning it talks about what no, it, it means one is coming or an instruction into the future we'll get there he says, I came to pass afterward that I will pour what? This talk about empowerment. Three things here empowerment, warning, and what? Instructions. Any year you hear my spirit, he sees the Holy Spirit, but it brings about a manifestation. That's why different name of God brings about different manifestations. Are we following? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Encoded in that name is the possibility of God to provide. Are we understanding this? All right, let's move further. He said, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see vision. He talks about empowerment. 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 Number two, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. Genesis 6 and verse 3. In my heart is sick of the land. Yes, I will. Uh, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with what? Are you seeing warning? My spirit will not be. Will not, we, we are not metal. Do you understand what I'm saying? God is saying, My spirit cannot be competing with a man. Warning. Are we following? 
And say, and the Lord said, My spirit will not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet the day shall be an hundred and what? And give an instruction. Don't worry, you will grow old. But you won't, but you will not be here. Are we following now? The spirit of warning. Let me show you one more scripture. And then I will jump from there. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, if I'm correct. Yes, Zechariah 4 and verse 6. Warning, empowerment, and instruction. Zechariah 4, 6. But by my spirit sees the Lord. But by my spirit sees the Lord. And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by what? Not by might? Not by what? Not by power? But my what? Sears. So what get that job done is not your mind. It's an empowerment of the Spirit. It's not your intellect, but your spirit. Are, you, are we following now? So when we hear my spirit, it talks about warning, it talks about empowerment, it talks about what? Instruction. Number four, you can find in scripture the spirit of the living God. That means, you see, spirit of the living God. I'll just show you one because of time and I'll move to number five. I'll show you one also and I'll stop there. But that number five is one of the things I really want to discuss this morning. And this is what I want us to pray with this morning. Spirit of the living God. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. Second Corinthians. We can see in scripture the spirit of the living God. So the spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God. Second Corinthians chapter Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 2. He said, Ye are the I love this. Ah, I love this. He said, Ye are our peace to written in our heart. Know and read known and read of all men. Look at verse 3. For as much as for as much as you are manifestly declared to the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of what? living God in the tables of stone but in fleshy tables of your heart the meaning of that is this anywhere you hear the spirit of the living God it came to make the word of God real to us and make us an epistle of Christ do you know why the word the, the, there's a dimension of the spirit of God that makes the word of God real to you they say this is what the word of God is saying you see many Christians lack this manifestation of the spirit because we don't allow the word of God to be real to us. We just want to hear for hearing's sake. There are many persons, the reason why they come to church today is Pastor Professor. No. He said, just speak right now. I've lost money. I would like to recover. It might be among other things why you have come to seek God. There's nothing you have come to seek God for that God will not answer. But the truth is this. Believe me as I tell you. The word of God become real and will become a peace to that is written. Look at this. Let me read this scripture again. He said, as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, manifest, ministered by us, not with, not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in the tables of stone, but in earthly flesh. Meaning, the spirit of the living God is that oppression of the spirit that deals with our heart, that make the spirit of, that make the word of God real in us and through us. Is it making sense? <laughs> Are we confused? I'm trying to be simple so that I will not do. Anyway, they, they won't teach this one in theology school. Number five. When you hear the power of the highest, you see the Holy Spirit. Power of what? Number five. The power of the highest. Ah! I love this dimension. I will stop here. I just gave you five names that relate to the Father as the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Living God, my Spirit, and what? That's right. Number five, the power of the highest. Luke 1, 34 to 35. 
This is where we are going to pray. Please pay attention to these things. All of you that are young, you have time now. Use it. Use it. All of you that are young, use it. Use this time now. Use it. Some of us that are here that are already thinking, I wish I knew this thing many years ago. My life wouldn't have been like this. But there's restoration in God. Say amen. Use it. Use it. Power of the highest. Luke chapter 1 and verse 34 to 35. Look at this. And the angel appeared. We all know this story. He said, and the angel, and the angel, and the angel appeared and said unto her, The Holy Ghost. Are you saying this? Are you saying this? Please pay attention. He said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. What is coming upon you? Right. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. It will not come like a shadow. When the Spirit of God comes like a shadow, it is called the power of the highest. Like something overwhelming. Like somebody is standing right now and you carry a bucket of water. Have you seen maybe on social media where some, somebody is about to be anointed and they, they carry a jar of oil and they are pouring on the person? Uh, what they are trying to do is that the power of the eye has come upon the person. Do, you don't need that one anyway. You don't need to bath somebody. I, I do understand what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Alright. Maybe I don't know that yet anyway. But the one I know, let me say. I say, And the power of the eye shall overshadow you. And therefore also, that the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Stop. Let me. This is where I really want to pay attention. A time came that God wanted to bring Messiah and then he sent an angel to meet a lady called Mary. And this lady was preparing to be married. Mary. And then he looked. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Alright, I will not say this one. So that I will not get into trouble. I won't say this one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I won't say this one. Alright. So, Mary, God encountered Mary and he said, you will give birth to a son. And then Mary asked, he said, how shall this thing be? And the angel appeared. And the angel answered and said, he said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the eye shall overshadow you. And you will give birth to a child and it shall be called a son of God. The meaning of that is this. When the Holy Ghost come upon you and comes to overshadow you, anything impossible in your assignment becomes possible. It becomes a realm of if you get these things, I've trekked this thing for long. Just make sure you are in the will of God for your life. There is no impossibility that can ever stand against you. If they are trying, that's why I don't pray. Oh, protect me. If you are against me, you are in trouble. You are already angry at me. You are already in trouble. I know it. And that's why some people get here. I will just be laughing. Because I know the reality of the scripture to which I tried. And this thing is genuinely real. When the angel like Cantor Mary, what did he say? He said, The Holy Ghost will come upon you. There is a power called the power of the highest. Which is actually, which is actually a dimension of the Spirit of God. When, which is actually a dimension of the Holy Spirit. When this come upon you, whatever I look as if it is impossible becomes possible. Let me tell you this. I've engaged this scripture before. Somebody came to me. I was looking for something. I quoted this same scripture, and I heard the person's hand, and I said, "The name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you right now. Let this power of the eyes overshadow you. I command every impossible situation you have to become possible." And I and I see testimonies. I've engaged this scripture literally to pray for people before. What is that impossible case in your life? When that dimension of the Spirit of God comes, which is called the power of the eyes overshadows you. There is nothing you are looking for that you will not get. And that, okay, do you know it is, okay, let me say this. Maybe you don't understand. Now look at me, everyone. Maybe you don't understand. Let me help you. How many of you have given birth before? Raise up your hand here. You have given birth. You have a baby. Raise up your hand. Don't be ashamed now. You are a mentor to the people that are still trusting God. 
you have a baby, you raise it up very well. All right. And I put down your hands. So you know the process to which to give her to a baby. And an angel appeared to you and he said, Look at me. You are going to conceive without knowing a man. Take about Mary's from your village. The Mary in the Bible, not, uh, not all the fake, fake Mary's. Do you understand? Take about the Mary in the Bible is your sister. You just see the tummy growing. And you say, Mary, your tummy is growing. You say, I'm pregnant. But I'm still a virgin. Hmm? Hmm? You say, I'm pregnant too. But I'm a virgin. <laughs> That's a seemingly impossible situation. I'm not, you see, all of our brothers and sisters that have been fornicating on credit. This one you have to repent. So that God can use you to give back to a son of God. Are we together? Sorry, let me face the innocent people here. Okay, let me get close here. Amen. All right, are we still together? Now let me turn my back to these people. All right, are we still together? All right. Now, it's impossible to actually have a baby without having to know a man. But there is a dimension of the Spirit of God called the power of the highest. When it comes upon you, that will look as if it's impossible with man, become possible. Who told you you won't get that job? No, no, you will. When the power of the eyes overshadow you, you look as if it's impossible. God will make it possible. Rise to your feet. I'd like you to just lift up your right hand praying in the Holy Ghost. Can I have somebody on the keyboard? I'd like you to just lift up your right hand praying in the Holy Ghost and look at that area of your life that you want a possibility right now. Believe me, as I tell you, between now and next Sunday, there will be a testimony. I tell you by the Spirit of the Living God. Just lift up your right hand. We we'll pray in the Holy Ghost. Look at that issue around your life. What is that impossible situation? When the power of the highest comes, just pray in the Holy Ghost. The power of the highest is about to fall right now. Yes, the power of the highest is about to come. The keyboard, please. The power of the highest is about to fall right now. Brande ko brodi ya masan kabalinga brandi ya magas brenda holy ghost lekande ke brodi ya bossa kambali ya keski te hinda la brati there's an impossibility that is about to be torn right now e kabari mazukente di kambala kaduski te hinda la brati that limitation is about to be broken di kanda le bossa e kambala koski te brenda holy ghost sheka te kabaraka te yanda ke bolita e kabande ke brodi ya koski te hinda kabari ya teti